Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Courtney and today we're going to be discussing one of the most hotly debated subjects in personal finance, renting versus buying. We'll break it down by category and discuss the weaknesses, the strengths, and the costs associated with both of these housing options. If you are debating between renting versus buying, this should help you find the option that's best for you and make you aware of the many costs and traps that are hidden within both of these options. We all know that housing can be the biggest item in most people's budgets. So figuring out what's right for you and what makes the most sense for you financially will set you up for success down the road. So let's jump into it. Let's start by looking at the upfront cost of renting versus buying. When it comes to buying a house, the main fee that you need to consider is the down payment that's needed to secure a loan. The median down payment in America is usually 12% of the home's value. Just for reference, when we apply this to the median home value in the United States, which is $217,000, this comes out to around $26,000. But this will vary greatly depending on your location, your credit score, and other situational factors. And it's important to note that you have to have this money saved and accessible whenever you're ready to buy. Other upfront fees include inspections and closing costs. Closing costs are typically two to 5% of the home's value, which could mean that you're handing over thousands of dollars right off the bat for those. The upfront fees for renting are significantly less. Typically you might need to pay an application fee which can be around $100 to $200. You'll also need to put down a security deposit, which is often one to two months worth of rent. But outside of this, there aren't really many upfront fees associated with renting, which is great because then your money can be in the stock market and growing instead of tied up in all of these upfront costs. One pro tip to reduce some of these upfront renting fees is to ask your landlord if there are any deals going on. I had one apartment complex where I got a full month's worth of rent free because I signed before a particular date. And for the current apartment that I rent, I got a significantly reduced application fee and I didn't have to pay a security deposit just because I worked for a specific company that had a deal with my apartment complex. When it comes to renting, sometimes the leasing agent is trained to not offer you any deals unless you specifically ask for them. So it's always worth a try. So in summary, for upfront costs, renting definitely takes the cake. The second major factor to consider is insurance costs. And again, there's a big difference here. When it comes to home ownership, insurance is a must. The average home insurance cost in the United States is $2,305 but that will vary depending on a bunch of different factors. But it's important to factor this into your budget when you're considering the overall cost of home ownership. For renting, insurance is significantly cheaper. The national average for renter's insurance is typically 12 to $15 a month, which comes out to around $250 a year. Since this is significantly cheaper than homeowner's insurance, this is a major perk to renting. So for the insurance category, renting definitely comes out on top. The next important category to consider when it comes to renting or buying is the equity that you're building. Equity is the value of your asset, which in this case is your living place. For homeowners, equity is one of the major perks. For most places in America, your home is an appreciating asset, which means that the value of your home increases over time. This makes your house another investment that you can leverage when growing your net worth. The primary downside of renting is that you're not building any equity. Your rent payments aren't going towards any sort of ownership. And that's why some view rent as just throwing money out the window. But as we'll continue to see, there are many other perks to renting and these are what you're really paying for. So for building equity, the clear winner is home ownership. The next category we'll discuss is the freedom to move. When it comes to buying a home, many view this as settling down, which probably means that moving around isn't your biggest priority right now, which is good because buying a home makes it a lot more difficult to get up and move if you wanted to. Selling a house can be a really tedious process between closing costs, moving costs, and sometimes even capital gains taxes, 
these can really eat into your profits. For renting, part of what you're paying for is flexibility. And even with leases being typically around a one year commitment, it's so much easier to get up and go if you wanted to. And for this reason, renting definitely wins out in the mobility category. The next area we'll analyze is taxes and fees. When you buy a home, you're more likely than not to be liable to pay property taxes on that home. The percent that you actually pay will vary state to state and district to district but this is definitely an expense that you need to budget for. You'll also have to take into account any homeowners association fees that you might need to pay every month for being a homeowner in a certain area. For renting, you won't be on the hook for property tax or homeowners fees, but there might be a few other fees that apply depending on your living situation. Some apartments will charge you a pet fee if you have an animal that lives with you. And others, oftentimes in big cities, might require you to pay for a parking spot every month which can definitely add up over time. So for this category, the winner is renting, since the fees are considerably lower than homeownership fees. Another category that's critical to discuss is maintenance. For homeowners, your home is probably one of the biggest investments that you have, which makes maintenance to protect your investment very important. But it's really amazing how much these little maintenance costs can really add up over time. Whether that's fixing a crack, replacing a faulty appliance, or retiling your whole roof, there are going to be maintenance expenses that come with home ownership. So even though your home is probably growing in value over time, it's important to remember the money that you're putting into your house to keep it functioning. For renting, most of the maintenance responsibility falls on the landlord. This is great because it frees you up from the many unplanned expenses that can blindside you as a homeowner. It also frees up your time because you're not the one who has to make all of these fixes to yourself. And with time being one of the most valuable resources Sources that you have, this is definitely a major perk to renting. So for the maintenance category, renting is the winner. Another category that's essential to consider is lifestyle inflation. Lifestyle inflation is whenever you raise your standard of living, which typically means that you're raising your spending habits as well. With home ownership, this typically means that people are upsizing from their current living situation footprint. While there's nothing wrong with this, it's important to think of the expenses that come with this. With more house comes more things that are needed to fill that space. And this can lead to spending way more on furniture and decor than you would normally. With renting, you can definitely still fall into these lifestyle inflation habits. It's often easy to justify paying more for a great view, better amenities, a better location, or just a fancier building. Again, there's nothing wrong with this, but it's important to think about where this money is going. Typically, when you get accustomed to more and nicer things, it becomes difficult to revert back to your lower spending habit. So the longer you can resist this urge, the better. So for the lifestyle inflation category, we'll call this a tie. The final category that we'll discuss, and probably the one that you're all interested in, is the overall cost of renting versus buying. Which one wins out over time? Well, as you probably guessed, it depends on a lot of different factors. A lot of people will say that buying will win out all the time, but this simply just isn't the case. Even though the rent you're paying every month isn't building your equity like a mortgage would, there's still a lot of cost to home ownership outside of your mortgage, like fees, taxes, and maintenance. On the other hand, rent prices typically increase every year, and this is money that's going straight out the door and not building your wealth in any way. In general though, if you plan to put down roots and stay in a place for a long period of time, typically around five years, then buying is going to win out. If the house is a lot more expensive, in general, you'll have to stay there longer in order for these costs to even out. If you are considering renting or buying, there's some great online calculators that can help decide what's right for you. These calculators typically take into consideration your location, your target home price, how much of a down payment that you have available, and also your average monthly rent to compare it to. They factor in all of these different areas and they'll typically tell you how long you have to stay in a house that you might buy in order to break even on these costs. So I'll leave one of these calculators in the description below if you wanna play around with your numbers. So there you have it. Both renting and buying are great options, depending on where you are in life and as long as you know all of the fees associated with each of them. If you like this video, please be sure to like and subscribe. And I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.